What does it mean to survive? I'd like to offer two definitions. One definition is to outlive. You know, that's the meaning intended when the newspapers many times put together obituaries and most every obituary mentions that so-and-so is survived by and they list the relatives that are still living, the wife, the husband, the children, and they continue to live on after the person died. Another definition of survive is to persist and come through some challenge. And that's the meaning that people intend to convey when they wear t-shirts many times. And I survived riding the Goliath at Six Flags. I survived Hurricane Katrina. I survived the blizzard of 14. Each of these statements makes reference to the fact that there were some significant obstacles that were overcome by them so that they could go right on living a good life. And you may be familiar too with a TV program that's now running for 18 years and is called Survivor. And it dramatizes how young people compete with one another to overcome some natural and some man-made obstacles on an island. And the one who does so is called the Survivor. And that person wins a prize of one million dollars. Well, being held a survivor is the basis for today's celebration. It's called the Feast of All Saints. For today, we honor all the holy men and women who have gone before us and have overcome obstacles and difficulties, not on a TV show, but found in this world. And they have succeeded in receiving not the prize of money, but the prize of eternal life living with God forever in heaven. Today we celebrate them and we honor them and we applaud them as we rededicate ourselves to following them and joining with them one day at the heavenly banquet. What does it take to get to be with them in heaven? Well, we have to survive the time of trial here on earth. We have to persist and come through obstacles, difficulties, temptations, all these things that come our way in this life. What exactly do we have to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? That's the question of all questions. And it's precisely the question that the psalmist presents to us today. He asks, who can stand in this holy place, referring to God's home, heaven? Who can stand in this holy place and then the psalmist today answers his own question. He says, one whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, he shall receive a reward from God, his Savior. You know, Jesus, in addition to being fully God, is fully man. During his time on earth, he was fully God and fully man. And in his manhood, in his humanity, he was also a survivor. Remember, he too was tempted by Satan. He too experienced many of the difficulties we have. He got sick. He got tired. You know, he got lonely. He had many of the same experiences that we do in our life. He found himself surviving these assaults and the temptations. And what does he want? He wants all of us, his brothers and sisters, to survive the same temptations, the same difficulties, the same obstacles, so that we can be with him forever, with the Father in heaven. And to help us along, he gave us a series of hints on how to do what he wants us to do. We call them Beatitudes, the word means blessings, and so we heard them proclaimed just now, the Gospel of Matthew, our deacon just proclaimed them, nine of them. And we will have success if we survive the obstacles of this world. What does Jesus promise in those blessings? Many things. Here's three that are related. He said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For they will see God. For their reward will be great in heaven. Just imagine what it would be like to be in heaven 
and to see God, the creator of all that is, the savior, the mediator, the redeemer of the human race. This side of heaven, we can experience God. We know he exists. He has touched our mind our, and our soul. We can't see him. But if we make it to heaven, we'll be able to see God face to face. St. John confirms this in our second reading today. It's his first letter, the first letter of John. Here's what he said. For we shall see him as he is. Wow. You know, there's no contest anywhere on earth that offers that kind of a prize. The prize of heaven is the top prize of all prizes. It is the prize of eternal happiness, and we can be united with God. What could possibly compare with this? Nothing. Nothing. We know this. And there were countless other men and women who went before us that knew this. They knew this. And so they went after it. Today they rejoice in heaven, and we acclaim them for being survivors. They survive time on earth, and they merit the kingdom of heaven. You know, it wasn't TV that came up with the term survivor. It was not. The term survivor comes from the Bible. Recall how in our first reading today, John also wrote that. It's from the book of Revelation. And one of the elders asked John, who are these wearing white robes? And then the elder answers his own question. He said, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. Following the Beatitudes of Jesus will enable each and every one of us to be a survivor, to win the prize, not of money. Who cares? What we want to win is the prize of eternal life in heaven. There are many there. There are countless men and women there that have survived the obstacles of living in this world. They've overcome the temptations of Satan. They've overcome the allurement of the world and the things that are so nice but are passing. The book of Revelation, John writes that. He says, there was a great multitude which no one could count. I don't know about you, but I find that so affirming. It isn't just a few people made it. There's a great multitude of which no one could count. There are many men and women that went through their life, had friendship with God, and now are with him forever in heaven. It is possible. We can do it. And that's why this feast day is so special, to remind us that it isn't an untouchable goal. It's a very realistic goal if we really, really, really want it. So as we go forward this day, Let's call upon the saints, they're survivors, and they're praying for us, and they're rooting for us. They want us to be united with them in the great love of God. So they pray for us, and we can look upon them, they're models. In the RCIA class, you know, we can look and we're gonna show them, we had that class on the saints, and we talked about a few of them, and their life that they lived, and how if we model their life of humility, and piety, and prayerfulness, we'll be with them, we'll be with them. Tomorrow we're gonna to have the school here, and every class is going to have one student dress up as a saint. Each class, all 12 classes, all 12 grades, pick one saint to have a banner for, to have a little pericope of their life, and to dress up as them. And so the whole school will learn about 12 men and women that are saints, sanctus, holy, there in the kingdom of heaven. There are so many. Pick one and just dig in and just find out what they did and then model that. They're, they're, they are our models of how to get there. Today, as we celebrate and honor the many saints in heaven, let's rededicate ourselves to being a survivor, a person who persists over obstacles and lives on in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs>